Hello, brothers and sisters. So let's just touch on wars and rumors of wars at the moment because it's peaking like no one's business. And it should be peaking because we're at that breaking point at the moment. So firstly, <clears throat> Russia's nuclear sub, the Belgorod, <clears throat> sorry, with their Poseidon drone has disappeared, gone dark. It's left port and it's missing. It's designed that way so that it can go dark. This is one of their biggest subs and it carries all these munitions. It's been sent out and deployed. So it's received its orders. Where it's going to strike, when it strikes, that we don't know. But the fact that that thing is deployed and it has the Poseidon drones on board, that is all really showing intent on Putin's side. So that's number one. Number two, the U.S. has deployed the USS Gerald R. Ford carrier to the Atlantic. It's carrying 9,000 troops for deployment. That's escalation again as well. So they're prepared. They know something's coming. They've got 9,000 troops that are going in. I was in the military, so I'm thinking 9,000 young men that are walking into something terrible. So, yeah, that, that's happening. Then North Korea has fired a ballistic missile over Japan again. They did this before. They've done it again now. Residents in Japan were told to go to shelters to take cover. Panic. Um, this is their fifth launch in 10 days. So now the thing here is out of all the countries in the world, Japan has a real personal, shall I say, traumatic experience with nuclear bombs. So this is hectic for them and they're upset. They're not happy. So it would seem that North Korea likes tormenting or taunting Japan and Japan being an ally of the US and the rest of them. <clears throat> it's just the one side working against the other side. And the interesting thing with this is South Korea's president has warned that they will respond to the missile launch. How they will respond remains to be seen. But all of this creates a tinderbox in that part of the world that's ready to go off at the same time. Then the Russian nuke train is moving closer to the Ukrainian front. Is he getting ready to use nukes in Ukraine now to make an example of them or to show his intent? What is this, the reason? Is he just trying to deflect attention to that and not to the Belgorod that's out there somewhere where it shouldn't be? I mean, we had Chinese and Russian ships cruising close to America's shores just the other day, spotted by Coast Guard. <clears throat> Are they preparing? Are they setting up the whole scenario that is coming to pass? Iranian Supreme Leader's son and family ducking out of their country via Dubai to Toronto, to Canada. That's happening. So the riots and unrest are having major effects. Are we going to see a regime change now? Are these things going to get quelled and put down in a very violent way? Is Iran going to try and show her strength and actually deploy nukes or other things against Israel to make a point and try and divert attention from what's going on in their home front? The Nord Stream gas leak is increasing in strength, which they're saying means Russia's turned it on again to keep people away from investigating who's at fault. So that's one way of looking at it. It's really interesting. So that's also happening. Lots of new Ukrainian soldiers speak fluent English and fight much better. That would say that there's already NATO troops on the ground wearing Ukrainian uniforms. This is not a new thing, people. In Vietnam, uh, the Russians regularly sent their pilots in and they went in dressed as the Vietnamese. They flew Vietnamese Russian planes so that they could build up experience against actually fighting their main enemy. And I think this is probably what's happening here. The problem being, if Putin's people catch any of these guys and can prove it, they've got liable cause to say we're officially at war with each other, which, come on, let's figure they are. But he can finally say, you see, they attacked first, they're attacking me, I have to respond. So there's a lot riding on that whole situation. That is a very hectic situation on the ground. Um, and then Azerbaijan, Armenia, that whole thing is getting really ugly. There's wars and rumors of wars everywhere. And it's heating up. The threats of nuclear warfare is heating up all the time. And the whole time, everyone says, as a, a friend of mine said the other day, an unsafe friend, oh, this is nothing. This is just the same as before.
It's just people posturing. Nothing will come of it. You can live in your dream world. This is not nothing. This is a convergence of prophetic events and a buildup of mad people coming to a head for the beast system to rise and take over completely. We've reached a point of no return. And for the world, that's a horrible prospect. For believers, it's amazing because we have no fear. We have hope, a blessed hope in Jesus Christ. And He will not forsake us. He has gone to prepare a place for us. If it were not so, He would not have told us. And if He goes to prepare a place, He comes again to collect us. So that where He is, there we may be also. So no matter the attacks, no matter how difficult it is, we will pray for each other, we will support each other, and we will persist and run the race with urgency, getting as many people out of darkness into light as we can in the time that is left. As long as we're here, we will occupy and fight back the darkness, alert people to what's going on, and be watchmen and watchwoman on the walls. And when He comes, may He find us busy with his work. God bless. Stay strong, focused and blessed and happy and focused on God. Shalom.